Good morning everyone, this is Anna with Traffic Generation Cafe and I'm um, coming to you this morning to have a cup of coffee with you, have a good talk about SEO, link building, page rank and anything else that you might want to talk about relating to traffic generation and um, just making our businesses better and everywhere we can. So anyway, um, as I'm waiting for people to uh, come in and log in and um, maybe ask me some questions, which I would absolutely love, um, let's talk a little bit about PageRank. Um, the reason why I think it's very important is because there's a lot of conflicting information about it um, out there. Not that I have all the answers. Um, I'd like to think so, but I don't think so, really. Uh, but um, just a couple of pointers on that. First of all, is PageRank valuable? Is it of value still? Um, if you read any post on my blog and many other blogs, um, you will get the idea that really it isn't. And that's very true. We shouldn't be focusing on PageRank as a way to um, evaluate websites for, um, for instance, for link building purposes. On the mm -hmm. other hand, um, Page, page rank unfortunately does have a lot of value to it uh, because a lot of advertisers or a lot of clients will be looking at page rank and will determine whether they want to have business with you or not based on page rank. So yes, it is important and yes, we should still pay attention to it um, from that point of view. So um, a couple of other things. I see some people joining me, but I don't see anybody uh, logging in for chat, so make sure that you log in and um, ask me some questions, okay? So anyway, um, page rank. Uh, there is a difference, just in case you didn't know, there is a difference between what is called visible page rank and actual or real page rank. Um, visible page rank is what you see on that green toolbar um, if you have Google Toolbar installed or any other SEO toolbar. Now, that green bar is just a, um, a frozen snapshot of your website um, some time ago. It may be two months, it may be four, five, six months ago, who knows. But it does not, um, it doesn't really show where your website is really with Google. Uh, at any given point of time. So you're looking at page rank and yes it does show some green uh, bar but it really is not uh, a good metric to pay attention to because it's just simply not um, current and because it's not current it's really not valid for any kind of estimation. Uh, real page rank is something that Google calculates on a daily basis. Um, they keep that in their database. Um, so even when you look at the website and it doesn't show, it may sh not show any um, visible page rank, it doesn't mean that it doesn't have any. So that's very, very important, something very important for us to uh, remember, especially when it comes down to link building. Another thing, as far as link building is concerned, if we only focus on page rank, you may see page rank showing as, uh, let's say, four for a page. But in reality, Google has downgraded that website, and page rank is maybe one, or maybe it's even sandboxed. You don't know because uh, it doesn't necessarily, it's not necessarily reflected in that toolbar. So you definitely need to have other means, other ways of determining the value of a page other than by page rank. And um, there were a few good articles written on the topic. I'm going to post the links to those articles. Uh, one of the websites that I recently discovered is by Randy Pickard. Randy, good morning if you're looking, uh, if you're listening this morning. Good morning, Lou. Good to see you here. Um, anyway, uh, Randy Pickard of, um, I believe, InternetMarketingRemarks.com, and I will post the link as well down below. Um, so he gives a lot of good ideas of how to determine a value of a website without going for the green toolbar. Um, things like um, whether the page is cached and how often it's cached, or uh, site links, or MOZ rank, MOZ rank um, also called. So different things that you can do to see if the website is indeed valuable. I'm not sure what the echo is coming from, uh, Lou, but um, maybe I should try to 
speak up a little bit. Good morning, Eliana, all the way from Italy. So good to see you back. Anyway, so the people are starting to come in for the chat. Make sure you ask me any questions, guys, if you have as I talk. Um, so anyway, going back to the page rank, it is very important for us to... Good morning, Rana. Good to see you. It's very important for us to understand how we can evaluate a website to see if it's a good, uh, if it's a good um, connection for us, if it's a good thing for us to build links from that website. Because, you know, I've heard some people say that link building is not nearly, even not nearly the uh, most important ranking factor um, in Google al algorithm, but those people haven't come out and said what else is more important than link building. So I'm still standing with the fact that link building is still very important for us to do um, if we want to achieve any kind of search um, engine rankings, and I'm sure most of us do uh, want to have that. So it's very important for us to learn how to determine the value of a page that we're linking from. And page rank, as I said, might not be the good um, or the best characteristic, the best way of doing it. So um, let's see, um, MOZ rank, as I already mentioned, uh, might be a good way to, to go about it. Um, there are different ways that you can do um, that you can determine the value of a page. and. Um, if you continue reading uh, Traffic Generation Cafe this week, and I'm sure you will, uh, you will see a lot of posts on link building on SEO because I decided to make link building and SEO uh, a focus on Traffic Generation Cafe for this week because it's something very important for us to talk about. People have a lot of questions about it, as I know, because I get those questions a lot. So we'll definitely be talking more in depth about how to do any link building. Again, guys, um, I know there are a few listeners online. Feel free to type up any questions as you have them, okay? So anyway, so this week on Traffic Generation Cafe, um, we'll be talking a lot about link building, uh, things like anchor text, things like how to use RSS feed to uh, create a lot of backlinks on autopilot and not necessarily links back to your site because those might not be high quality links but I will show you how to use those links to build up your profiles on social media like on Facebook and Twitter and um, about me and all kinds of different pages where you can set profiles with do follow links and how can you boost the page rank and authority for those pages so that they will come back to your website carrying authority in that link and not just a low quality link. So you will learn that on Traffic Generation Cafe this week. Um, I had a few questions during the week that I answered. I will answer in the post today um, things like um, should you uh, use pinging services to ping your new po newly published posts and what happens if you edit those posts would that still ping them and uh, might you be banged from pinging services if you ping too much there I go I keep saying the word ping but I can't get away from it um, that one Jane goes to you Anyway, so we'll definitely be talking about that. Um, I wrote a post on anchor text because this is very important and um, many people I say are not using that correctly, even on my side, because I'm using a keyword love plugin, which means that you don't have to spam my website because you don't have to just use um, your keywords as your name. And I do, unfortunately, trash a lot of those comments because it just doesn't look good But uh, when you do that. Um, but you can use keyword love so that you can still use your name and then use add symbol and add your keywords. And what the plugin does is it still keeps your name, but it converts your keywords as anchor text going back to your website. So we'll be talking a lot more about anchor text, how to properly use it, how to... Um, vary your anchor text to for it to be appear more natural because it's very very important if you keep using the same anchor text in your link building sooner or later you might be punished by Google for over optimizing your website for that anchor text and the reason for that is that Google um, 
I don't really think they mind SEO. Um, they have created a lot of people for us webmasters to use, um, like Google Webmaster Tools or Google Analytics. So I think they do encourage uh, for uh, website owners to do a lot of um, SEOing over. Um, a lot of, I'm sorry, optimizing their websites for search engines. Um, they just want to do us um, a good job at it and not overdo it by spamming our websites, by building a lot of spammy links, for instance. Um, so they do provide a lot of tools for us to do some um, link building, some um, on-page optimization, uh, but at the same time, they want to make sure that it's done naturally, that we still get a lot of natural links. So when a user goes to your website and they like something, and then they want to link to a specific blog post on your blog, back on their blog, what are they going to use as anchor text? Most likely your name. They will probably use um, the blog post name itself. So that's called natural um, link building. So you cannot just do um, let's say uh, weight management constantly as your anchor text because that's not natural, that's not what Google wants to see. So we will talk about that in my post on anchor um, text with, this week as well. Let me just... Um, Lou has a question. Should I delete my old blog for SEO purposes since I moved it the entire thing to WordPress. I read somewhere that Google really doesn't like duplicated pages. What happens is that I assume, Lou, that you took your, well, let's see, I think your old blog was with blogger.com, if I'm not mistaken. So you had a URL um, that was specific to blogger.com. Uh, so now that you moved it to uh, WordPress, you have a new URL for your um, new blog, of course. What you can do, and I'm not sure if it's possible to do it with blogger.com, but you should see if you can redirect that old domain name, name back to your new domain name. So in that way, you will keep your domain age, you will keep all the links, because all you're doing is you're telling Google basically that this is my old website, I redirected it back to my new website. So all the content, all the links, um, all the juice that you have on your old, old website will just flow back into the new one. So again, I'm not sure how you do it with Blogger, I've never done it before, but check into that. Um, should you delete the old blog? If you can do the redirection, I wouldn't worry about it. And you know what? Um, speaking of duplicated content, I probably should make a post on it. But um, duplicated content issue mainly goes for your own blog. For instance, I don't know if I can explain it quickly, but I will try. For instance, you have a blog post that you posted on your website, and of course, on your blog, I should say, and of course that blog has a URL that is specific and unique to that blog post. When you click on that URL, it will bring you to the blog post. But you also have category pages, you also have tag pages on your website. And um, so, for instance, a blog post on link building will have a URL like yourblognamecom slash link building. But you can also access the same post through yourblog.com slash category slash link building. The URL looks differently, but it will bring you to the same content. That's where the duplicated content issue lies. Do you understand me? It's within your own website when you can access the same content through through different URLs. To us, the users, we still understand that that's the same post. But Google and search engines um, don't really. They consider that to be this, uh, several different pages. So we need to deal with duplicated content issues within our own blog. Uh, when you publish the same blog post, on different uh, blogs, different websites, that's called syndication. That's not necessarily the same as duplicated content because Google is fairly good at determining what the original sor source is for the um, content and then 
ranking that original source as um, the main source for the content on the search engine rankings. Um, actually, I just wrote an article, I'm sorry, I just read an article on Mashable.com about how Google has been um, getting a lot of heat in terms of um, ranking a lot of spammy website, um, website that scrape your content, ranking them um, in Google search engine uh, pages, SERPs, over the original content. So they have recently changed their algorithms um, and they say that that wouldn't be a problem anymore. So we'll see how it works. But basically, if you publish, when you publish a blog post, Google will be able to determine that that blog post was the original content uh, because of the date, because of the links that will be coming back to it. So ideally, anything else when you syndicate that same blog post um, in article directories, um, on different blogs, if you do that, um, Google will not penalize you as dupl duplicated content. So I hope um, that answered your question a little. Uh, good morning, Linda. Oh, I'm sorry. You were confused on time, but I'm glad you made it. So welcome. Okay, Lou, I'm, gla I'm glad you did. Again, you know, duplicated content is a little bit um, of a complicated issue and there's a lot of confusion and I think I need to write a post about that and I definitely will. So um, I'm still looking for more questions. People are a little bit slow this morning. Do you have uh, your coffee with you? Maybe we should all drink that. Good morning, Ellen. How are you? Good to see you here. I tend to talk too much when I do um, this shows. And for introvert, oh, Kat from Switzerland, good morning, how are you? So good to see you here. I tend to talk too much, so sometimes you need to shut me up and just ask me questions instead, otherwise I can just blabber and blabber and blabber. Anyway, good morning, Katie, how are you? Everybody's coming in and everybody has their coffee, so let's wake up. Some of you, for some of you, it's the middle of the day for Italy and Switzerland, but some of you still need to wake up. So let's um, get on with the questions and I'll see you in a minute, Alan. Um, so anyway, let's see, what else do we need to talk about here? Uh, we've talked about the, um, the anchor text. Um, of course, I will publish the um, schedule for the blog post that I wrote for this week, and I've got a lot of good stuff um, in store for you, I promise. Um, tomorrow, I have a great post from a guest, guest blogger. His name is Jason, and he will be talking about 15 scalable SEO strategies that you can use for your blog, for your website. And he wrote it for newly launched websites, but I really feel like um, you can use all those strategies for any website. And actually, I have learned quite a few uh, different things from him as well. Um, one thing that he brings back is guest posting. And, um, you know, I'm a big fan of guest posting, and we've talked about that before because it is really the, one of the best ways to build links back to your site. And the reason for that is because the most valuable links that you can get are in content links. Because Google can dif um, differentiate uh, where your links are located on the website, whether they're in the sidebar, in the footer. Um, the way they do it is because of how that link is surrounded. Is it surrounded from, uh, with many words, with a text, or is it surrounded with other links? So uh, when Google says that a link is coming from, in, from within content, uh, it gives the most value to that link because those are um, not very easily manipula manipulated. You really cannot do reciprocal link exchanges or buy links um, for in content. It just is not done. So anyway, so when you do guest posting, you do acquire the best possible links going back to your blog. And what Jason is bringing up in his post, and that's one thing that I sort of thought of um, before. I, of course, I knew that, but I didn't actually focus on this specific um, this specific aspect of guest posting. Basically, what he's talking about here is when you are, want to build links to this one specific blog post on your blog, 
let's see the post is about uh, link building. We'll keep it simple, otherwise I'll get confused. So it's a link building post. So what you do is you write a blog post specifically on link building for um, a guest blog. You use link building as your keyword, one of the keywords in the title. I hope you also use link building in the title of your own post on your own blog as well. And of course you, you use link building as anchor text to go back to your link building post on your own blog. So now you have two blog posts, your original one with link building in the title and of course optimized for link building. And then you have a guest post also with link building in the title as a keyword and also anchor text link going back to your original blog post. And that's the best way you can build links through guest posting because you have complete control over the topic, over anchor text, over how you optimize your guest post. So that's why guest posting is still one of the best link building strategies and I really every time uh, whether it's through my uh, blog or one of these broadcasts, I urge you to please, please, please go ahead and start um, doing guest posting because it's really, it's really very important for your blog. Um, it's always better to use to specific po uh, to link to a specific post and not your home page URL, Katie. And the reason for that is because um, your home page can really rank for only a couple of keywords. When you think of your website as one big large website, it makes sense for a user. But Google thinks of your home URL as just one page of your blog. One page of your blog can only rank for maybe two, three different keywords, but no more because, uh, you know, you can't rank, rank your home page for 10 different keywords. It just doesn't work that way. So your home page is just one page and you can focus on ranking it, let's say, for one or two main keywords that you would like your website to be ranked. Other than that, you need to pick specific posts or pages on your blog that you would like to rank for specific keywords. So you need to start bu building links deeply within your um, your blog. They're called deep links because you're linking to specific blog posts and not your home page. So you definitely should be doing that, Katie, more often. Um, Alan has a question. Is there any place we need to list keywords besides the content and blog URLs themselves? The most important places for to place keywords are in the title of your page, then in the description of your page. So for instance, you're writing a blog post. Most of you are either using a theme that is already optimized for SEO. Like for instance, I use thesis theme. And um, all I do after I write a post is to write an SEO title, an SEO description right underneath my post. And um, all of that will be keyword optimized and you always want to place your keywords towards the beginning of both your title and description. Now as far as adding meta keywords to your blog post, it hasn't been working for a long time so I wouldn't even try to do it. Maybe throw in one or two generic keywords in there, but I, I wouldn't bother with it. So basically your title, your description. Um, as far as other on-page factors, of course you should mention your link, uh, your keyword in several pa uh, places um, around the blog post. Some recommend um, in the very beginning and at the very end because the search engines read your blog um, from top left to bottom right like this. So if you put your keywords in the very beginning of your blog post and at the very end strategically it should catch the search engine crawler's attention and that should they should read your keywords to determine what the post is about. Uh, but you know what, a lot of SEOs say that it really doesn't matter that much and I agree with that because I have been able to rank um, some of my websites for keywords that are not even mentioned on the page at all. So 
don't focus too much on the keywords. Write for your readers. If you're writing a post on link building, make sure that they know you're writing about link building. Of course, you'll be using link building as your keyword here and there, um, and that happens naturally. So just focus on that, but definitely focus on title and description as your primary keyword um, attention getters as far as search engines are concerned. Um, I have a few new people coming in. Good morning, Patricia Johnson. Uh, let me see if I have any questions. I know I had earlier some questions. Um, this chat is moving so fast that sometimes it's hard for me to see the questions. It keep, keeps refreshing. But I saw a question about slugs. Somebody's having problems with slugs. And um, um, let me just go back very quickly. Linda is asking um, that I posted a while back about a validator site which checked the code errors, and you have a lot of them. And of course, I lost it, Linda. Can you recommend someone or a resource to clear problems? <laughs> to the Luda, I'd like me. Anyway, the problem is that. HTML code errors will always appear no matter what. I've tried, um, no matter how careful you try to be, um, you still will have HTML co code errors. Um, some HTML code errors, cert errors, ugh, I need some coffee. Crawl engine uh, spiders are able to bypass very easily because they're very common errors. But some of them are very difficult for them to do um, and it's advisable for all of us to make sure that our blogs are as code free as possible. The one thing that you can do about that is choose a good th uh, theme for your blog because you want to make sure that your theme is as code error free as possible. And this is where paid themes come in place. I don't recommend them because I make affiliate commissions off of them, which I do. I mostly recommend them because when you buy a, a purchase, when you purchase a paid version of a theme of some sort, it's coded correctly most of the times. When you do a free theme of any kind, um, most of the times the reason people do free themes is because they put their links at the footer of a free theme that basically creates a link building machine for their own sites. That's basically why free themes exist. So that's the only incentive for them to do free themes is because of the link building. So code free is not an incentive for them. SEO optimized is not an incentive for them. So just because you have a free theme and you use an SEO plugin like an all-in-one SEO pack doesn't mean that your website will function properly. So uh, many people think that paid themes are just because of the look and uh, um, different, uh, to set yourself apart from the pack. That goes without the saying, but um, it's also mostly for SEO purposes because those themes will be um, as error-free as possible. And again, I use thesis on my side. Now, what do you do when you still have a lot of code errors? Um, a lot of them you can fix yourself. Um, some of them I tried, trust me, when I first discovered how many codes, uh, code errors I have on my site, I could not believe it, and I spent hours trying to figure out if there was a way to do that, to fix those um, those errors uh, on your own. Now, I'm not a techie Linda. Uh, I never will be because I'm a blogger and my time is best spent putting out the content, uh, making money off the content because, after all, this is a business. So I assume that it's always better to hire someone who does have expertise um, or background in fixing um, those kind of uh, those kind of code errors? So, 
I can recommend someone that does that for me. Um, I will publish his information in blog post later. I hope he's not going to kill me because he'll be overwhelmed with all the work. But anyway, I think it is very important for us to at least fix the most important code errors so that um, our websites will remain crawlable and wouldn't prevent search engine uh, spiders um, to come in and rank our websites for all the possible keywords. Um, Alan is asking a question about pages. Is it best to have as many pages as possible instead of a category list? Mm. Alan, that's a tough question. Okay, pages. The reason why you want to create pages on your blog as opposed to just regular blog posts is because it's easier to optimize pages for certain keywords. It's called structuring of your website and it's you know it, it, it's a little bit complicated to explain but in a nutshell what you do is um, for instance you want to target a keyword link building. The best way to identify a page with that keyword is not to write just another blog post, but to create a specific page, optimize it for link building, and then as you publish different posts on your blog, you keep linking it back to that page. So that page gets a lot of linkage from your own blog, then it gets a lot of linkage from other websites, and you don't link out of that page. So what happens is that the page gets a lot of link juice from different directions, from your own blog, from other blogs. It gets a lot of links with anchor text connected to link building in some ways. So that gives the page a lot of authority on your website. So you don't link out, you link in, and that's the best, uh, the best way to rank your website uh, your blog, I should say, for a specific keyword. Now, categories are more for your readers. You can, um, some people do structure their website around categories, and they basically do the same thing. They basically cre create a category page on their blog, and then they direct a lot of links to that category page. But it's a much more difficult and not as efficient way of doing that. So keep the categories on your website for your users, um, definitely have a category um, widget of some sort in your sidebar or in your footer so that your visitors can navigate your site uh, through that. But um, don't focus on that as um, uh, for search engine ranking purposes. So I hope that answered your question. Um, when is it best to use long tail keywords, Rona is asking. You know, it never hurts to use long tail keywords. Um, a lot of people were very concerned when Google Instant came out, um, I think it was in July of um, last year, uh, because um, with Google Instant, as you know, Google decided that it wants to suggest what it thinks we're looking for, as opposed to us deciding what we're searching for. Um, and it decided to start updating the search engine uh, pages as we type up the term as opposed to waiting till we type it up. Well, many people don't like, me including, don't like Google Instant. As a user, I turned it off on my website. So long tail keywords still do work. And um, it's really fairly easy to start turning and targeting those long tail keywords because all you do is, for instance, you take link building as your seed keyword, then you um, add things like how to or um, well how to right now is the best example because uh, my mind is not working properly but let's see uh, you take link building and you turn it into a long keyword by doing how to do efficient link building how to build many links to your blog how to um, this is a very easy way to turn a uh, long tail uh, to turn your seed keyword into long tail keywords. And what you do is how to works great for titles as well. So you take that long tail keyword, how to do 
proper link building and you make it a title of your post so now every time somebody links to your blog post that specific blog post most likely they're using your title to link to it so you're basically doing link building with a perfect anchor text because your title is your perfect long tail keyword so that's the best way to do um, long tail keywords so I hope that answered your question. Let me just, uh, oh, it seems like Dev will have a, a lot of work coming his way because a lot of people um, are having problems with code errors on their blogs. You know, this is what I love about um, these broadcasts. And this is why it's so important that you guys come and interact with each other, not just me. First of all, I'm getting to know you because, good morning Dan, how are you? Um, because all these names that keep showing up on my blog, all the commenters, all the readers, I'm getting to know you on a more personal level. And that's great, but also you get to network within within this group, you're asking yourself questions, um, you're exchanging information, and that's absolutely brilliant because that's the best way for us bloggers to network, um, to build those relationships, to start linking to each other, read each other's blogs, and uh, it's pretty incredible. That's the power of internet. So let me see. I probably missed a few questions here. I'm sure I did. So I will... Um, Gibson, you're still having problems with your slugs, huh? You know, you and I should get together and maybe have a chat on Skype and see what's going on with your slugs and see if we can fix that for you, okay? So if you're still online, um, send me an email. I'll get you my Skype ID and we'll talk about that so we can um, get you squared on, away on that. So anyway, guys, I love having you here. I think I covered just about most of the questions here and if I didn't I'll definitely go back and see what else I need to talk about. It seems like people are exchanging a lot of I just love it. So anyway here's my morning cup of coffee, cold cup of coffee going up to you. Thank you so much for coming to my broadcast. I will definitely publish it to my blog along with any questions that I've been answering today. So make sure you come back and read that uh, post that I published today. And um, let's get connected at Traffic Generation Cafe. And uh, I always welcome your comments. You know that I answer all of them. Keep asking me questions. I love that. Um, God bless you too, I'll, Alan. Um, have a wonderful wonderful afternoon everybody uh, god bless you all and um, i'll see you here next sunday all right goodbye you're welcome linda lou ronna katie thank you guys